Aber eine Sache möchte ich mir trotzdem angucken, weil äh, ich hatte nämlich das Wheel von Q-Controls, das äh, zusammen mit AMG gemacht wurde, auf der Sim Racing Expo gesehen. Und das ist eins der... Also ich bin ja ein sehr großer Fan vom Mercedes-Wheel, falls ihr das nicht wisst. Also ich hätte gerne so ein Original davon. Und Q-Controls hat jetzt äh, quasi einen Nachbau davon gemacht. Und äh, Dan... Also Dan Suzuki hat das äh, zu Hause gehabt. Ich weiß nicht, ob er das immer noch hat oder ob er es wieder abgeben musste, aber ich möchte gerne mal sehen, was Dan dazu sagt. Weil ich bin so, ich habe so meine Fingerchen dann an, an dem Mercedes Wheel und ich finde das so schön. Das ist eins der schönsten Wheels, die es gibt. Lass mal reingucken, weil das so komplett dünn ist. Today we're looking at the new Cube Controls Wheel that was developed together with Mercedes AMG. Oh, uh, das ist aber schmal mit Buttons. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 und dann in der Mitte noch. Okay. Obwohl, nee, wir haben noch zwei. Okay, okay. Oh, okay. So the usual stuff before we get into it. The wheel was provided by Cube Controls for this review. They do not get to see the review before it's posted. Cube Controls. Oh, dass man das immer sagen muss, ne? Das geht mir mittlerweile auch schon so auf den, auf den Sack, aber man muss es halt sagen. Or Mercedes AMG do not have any impact on this review and all the opinions are my own. We'll start with the price because this is so much cheaper than I thought it would be. This is 709 euros. Ach so, ja, ich habe jetzt mit was cheaper gerade. Okay. Mm. Okay. Let's go. Plus taxes. Considering how much other car branded wheels on the market are like the grid Porsche or the Fanatec BMW, the Cosworth stuff. I think this is actually really priced very fairly. And the first impression, it comes in a nice box with a lot of blah blah on the front as usual. And the mm. wheel, if you take it out of the box, it feels very nice, but it is huge. It is such a big wheel. It's 320 millimeters and Oh, finally, das könnte das Wheel sein für mich ohne Display, was ich immer gesucht habe. Endlich eins mit einem ordentlichen Durchmesser, was nicht für kleine Kinder gebaut ist, mit 27 mm, wo ich immer aussehe, als hätte ich ein Spielzeug in der Hand. Ja! That is not a big size for round rims, but for a Formula style wheel. I mean, this is meant for GT cars, but for me, this is still a Formula style. Es gibt halt wirklich. Kein Wheel, kein ordentliches, ohne Display, was über 300 mm Durchmesser hat. Gibt's nicht. Hast vergessen. Suchst dich dumm und dämlich. Also nicht, sagen wir mal so, nicht eins, wo, wo man sagen kann, okay, ist jetzt nicht äh, Marke Eigenbau oder Marke Nachbau. Was nicht heißt, dass es schlecht ist, ne? aber ihr wisst, was ich meine. Wheel 320 in a style like this is just huge. As you can probably tell from the logo, The wheel was designed in collaboration with Mercedes AMG. A wheel very similar to this is actually used in the real AMG GT2 and the new AMG GT Track Series car. It's not exactly the same. It's not like the Fanatec BMW, which is exactly the same wheel for the real car and the sim, but they are similar. This one for sim racing has all the features that sim racers like, like the LEDs, funky switches, encoders. The one in the real car does not have LEDs. It doesn't have encoders. It looks a little bit different, but the shape and everything is the same. The size also is the same. I think the real one uses Otto P9 buttons or something similar. I've quickly had it in my hands in last year's Expo. But yeah, AMG, if you're watching, I would love to test the real wheel as well in that car. <laughs> but Please, können wir Dan da hinschicken? Das würde ich ihm sehr gönnen. AMG, mach das doch mal bitte, falls ihr das hier auch noch sehen soll, mach das doch mal möglich, dass Dan das mal im realen Auto testen kann. Today we are talking about the sim version. In general, what is your opinion on these co-developed wheels? Like, I think on the one hand, it's cool to see more real manufacturers recognizing sim racing as a sport and Porsche, Cosworth, Mercedes now getting into it. I think that is super cool to see. But on the other hand, I personally, having two logos here in the front and then... Du, Dan, da gibt's einen richtig guten Trick. Gaffer tape Einfach wegmachen. Mach ich auch immer. Wenn mich das stört und es ist im Blick, Einfach wegmachen. Einfach zack drüber und ruhig. It triggers my OCD a little bit. I mean, this is, to spoiler you, this is an excellent wheel. 
But driving a Ferrari and iRacing with this wheel, it would kind of trigger my OCD. I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below what's your opinion on these new developments with more manufacturers in the sim racing gear market. We'll start with build quality and spec. Sag mal, wenn das doch wie beim Auto ist, dann kann man den Stern auch abbauen, oder nicht? Also nicht, dass man den abbauen möchte. Also ich würde den Stern dran lassen, weil ich feiere dieses Wheel. Ich freue mich immer wie ein kleines Kind, wenn es in, äh, wenn es Innenaufnahmen gibt äh, aus dem richtigen AMG und dann siehst du da einfach dieses, diese dünne Scheibe mit den Griffen dran und hinten diese, die Knöpfe dazu. Feiere ich. Ich liebe dieses Wheel. And the build quality is just perfect. I can't really criticize anything here. We do have a brushed aluminum front with this carbon fiber inlet that has the Mercedes logo. And on the rear we have a die cast aluminum body. Very nice matte black with a cool AMG on top here. The wheel oh, is das würde ich nicht abkleben. 320 millimeters. Really big. Then we do have 10 RGB buttons on the front. We have two shifters, no dual clutch, also no possibility to add a dual clutch. Then we have two normal rotaries, two thumb rotaries and two funky switches. You can use it via Bluetooth or with the excellent cube controls magnetic cable. And the weight of the wheel, it's relatively light for its size. It's 1330 gram. That is included. <laughs> Including the spacer, which does not come with the wheel, but excluding the QR. We will start with the back of the wheel and look at the shifters. They are called the Track Series shifters and they are exactly the same in the real car. And the shifters feel great. I think they look super cool in that red anodized aluminum. I'm actually wearing a fitting shirt today. <laughs> Uh, but no, I really like the look of that. The activation force for shifting is about 8.1 Newton with a travel of 6 to 7 millimeters. They do have a minimum amount of play, nothing that will ever be noticeable while using it regularly. I just wanted to point it out. I've seen way worse shifters. I've seen a few shifters that are better, but especially considering that this wheel is like 700 euros, These shifters are amazing. The pedals are four millimeter thick carbon fiber, rounded on all edges. There's nothing sharp, feels very, very smooth. And there are four preset positions where you can mount it to the pedal arm. And I just have it in the default where it came from the factory and that works very well for me. I think there is damping on the shifters on one side, like when you let go of the pedal, but the other side is not dampened, I think. I didn't want to take the shifter apart because it has these pins that I don't know how to remove. They are not the quietest shifter in the world, but they are also not the loudest. It's like in the midfield. I mean, you can hear it now here while I'm talking. Hey, Jan, the GSE shifter, ne? Die hört man bei mir noch im Nachbardorf. Also alles ist leiser als GSI. Alles. Wirklich alles ist leiser als GSI shifter. Also Version 1, die ich habe. It's okay. Then technology in the shifters, typical cube controls, hall sensors. It's just the best that you can do in my opinion, because that will not wear. You can, in theory, adjust the point where it will shift, not on this wheel, but in theory you can. So yeah, shifters, thumbs up for me. Then on the back, we also have an antenna for the Bluetooth connectivity and in theory an on-off button, but on my review sample, this button got lost somehow. And the pattern for mounting is 50.8 millimeters. You can get one of these matching red hubs from Cube Controls as well. And then, The magnetic cable. I'm so just, geil. I'm a big fan of this. Because look at this. Das ist richtig gut. It is so easy to connect. Du, Windows 11 mag das nicht, äh, Dan. Hab ich schon mal ausprobiert. Mach's nicht zu viel. <lacht> da ist irgendwann auf einmal, äh, Feierabend. And I wish this was not proprietary and Cube Controls would give every, every manufacturer access to it. I think every wheel should use this cable because it's just the best. There's, you don't even need like, fancy QRs where the signal goes through the QR or wireless like this cable. And this is a relatively strong magnet, feels like the Apple MagSafe connector and I've had zero issues with it. And even if you have like a crazy crash and it might disconnect, it goes back on so quickly. Yeah, but ACC mag das nicht, wenn das Wheel mal weg war. It's just, yeah, I think it's the best solution on the sim racing market for cables. Then also dual clutch, It doesn't have one and you cannot add one, which is a shame because I would love to see it here, but yeah, not possible. Okay, coming to the front, we have 10 RGB buttons, of course, controllable by SimHub. You can do whatever you want with mm. them. You can have static lighting, you can have like the left side blink when there's a car next to you, or you can pretty much do whatever you want with these. These buttons are spring-loaded. I took the wheel apart because I always have to look 
inside, whether it's it's done well. And all the springs came out of the wheel. I didn't know that there were springs. It was a little pain to put back together, but the result of that mounting mechanism, the spring-loaded buttons, these buttons feel absolutely amazing. I'm a big fan of the Otto P9 button, but I think these are even better. You have an activation force that I measured at 9.3 Newton, which is ridiculously high. It's higher than the shifters. And the travel of the button is medium, I would say. Long to medium. And they just feel... Is that what it is? That's what my noise wheel. Button, weiß ich nicht, aber das wird mein neues Wheel. Sag ich euch jetzt schon. Das ist es. Da kommt nichts mehr. Dieses Jahr. Nein. Feel amazing. Six of the buttons are surrounded by a little das plastic it. shroud and the two in the bottom are just plain. Es gibt ein einziges und das wäre das X29 von GSI, aber das hat nicht den Durchmesser. Then we do have two rotary encoders on the front with a black aluminum knob. The rotational force needed to rotate it is 3.4 Newton centimeters. They feel very good. Remind me a lot of how the Elma encoders feel. The rotational force is not as high as on the Elma, but considering that Cube Controls actually uses relatively small knobs here, it pretty much feels the same. Unfortunately, they are not push buttons, so it's just left, right. Then the same for the two thumb rotaries with a nice red anodized aluminum knob. Same rotational force and also no push button. The position of the thumb rotaries, very good. You do hit the shroud around that uh, button here when you try to move it, but I don't think it's a big issue. You don't typically try to skip 2,000 steps when, when rotating these anyways. Then we do have two funky switches with red aluminum knobs. The classical seven-way out switch, you know it from... That's an Andy's Lieblingsklöpfe. Every wheel. Super useful. You have two in ergonomically a perfect position. And we also have four LEDs that you can use for whatever you want. I would probably use this for RPM red light. Uh, right now it's displaying a pit limiter, but you can do whatever you want with it. Then there are also two status LEDs that show the battery status and the wireless connection status. I'm not using wireless. Like I said, I think this cable is the best solution out there. I haven't even tried the wireless functionality because I think that's just for what. I've tried it on the F-Core. It was perfectly fine there. Dan, danke. Von ganzem Herzen danke, dass du das gerade gesagt hast. Wireless ist Much. Wireless ist einfach Much am Lenkrad. Wir können uns alle noch an diese Szene erinnern. Mitten in der Nacht. Oh, scheiße. Ich sitze im Auto und mein Lenkrad ist leer. Oh, ich habe das nicht geladen. Mm. Oh, okay. Nope. Mm -mm. There, I'm sure it will be fine on this one as well. Then the stickers that you can put on the buttons are decent, but I've definitely seen better stickers. I still think that grid engineering makes the best stickers for sim racing wheels, but this is okay. Ergonomics. The wheel feels very good. The grips are, I would say, medium to thick. Uh, for my hands, pretty much perfect in size. They feel very similar to the ones of the F-Core that I also loved. Um, The material is silicon. I don't know if it's the same as the F-Core. It feels maybe slightly less grippy, but still very grippy. Will attract dust. That's just like the downside of these silicon grips. But I much prefer those grips that will attract dust than the harder grips like on the F-Pro, for example. There will be enough grip whether you use gloves or whether you use no gloves. No problems here. There's plenty of space for your hands. I use gloves size L or XL depends on the manufacturer and I have zero issues with the clearance here feels very good I guess even if you have very small hands that should still work two buttons are very nice to reach these encoders are nice to reach the funkies are good to reach the buttons in the bottom are not very good to reach but typically you put stuff on here that you don't use regularly I mean I have it set up for a wiper light skull and active reset so you don't use these all the time and mm. having these Elements all in reach is good. Okay, one thing that I do not like that much oh. is the size. 320 millimeters. I'm sure the more I use it, the more I get used to it. But sometimes it feels more like driving American Truck Simulator than a GT car, to be honest. Hä? Aber du fährst doch die ganzen GSI-Lenkräder, Dan, oder nicht? Die sind doch auch alle, die sind doch auch alle so groß. Hm? I mean, it is the same size that is being used in the real cars, so it's not unrealistically big or something. But it's just, I'm not used to steering wheels that big. And for example, the GSI FPE that many people said is too big is 310 millimeters, and this is even bigger at 320. Yeah, this is so viel mehr. 
there are a lot of round rims at that size or bigger. For whatever reason, this feels bigger than a round rim at the same size. I don't know. It's hard to explain. It just feels big. Okay, then I want to quickly show you the software <clears throat> side. We do have the same problem as on the F-Core and as on the uh, pedals. When you have triples and your center monitor is your main monitor and you start the software, I can't move this. I always have to change the main monitor to the left and then back to the middle to be able to move this somewhere. It's not a big problem. You don't have to move it. But if you want to film it for a review, cube controls, please have a look at that. Anyways, inputs. It's a little button tester. Shows you all the inputs that you have here. Uh, one thing that they've improved in this firmware is if you turn it really fast on the F-Core, sometimes it would go to the wrong direction. Not the case anymore on this one. Good job. Then you have the encoder pulse width adjustment on top here. Uh, that's basically how long the encoder button will send a uh, on signal. Some games require higher values. Some games work with lower values. I typically have it at 40. It works with iRacing. It works with ACC. I don't really play anything else. RGB, only useful if you do not use SimHub. And you should use SimHub because it's amazing. But if you don't want to, you can set static RGB LEDs here. I haven't used it because why would you not use SimHub? And pedals is for the calibration of the shifters. So, for example, if your shifter does funny stuff and doesn't shift properly, just go here, calibrate, pull the pedal, click, done. Oh, cool. And you can save it. And you have a freshly calibrated shifter. That's nice. And firmware updated also in here, but there's nothing right now. If you do want to use the wireless functionality, according to cube controls, the battery with the LEDs disabled lasts for 50 to 60 hours. And with the LEDs on the highest brightness, it's supposed to last about 10 hours. In SimHub, if you want to add it, it's in the device section. I'm using a beta version of SimHub right now because this is a review unit, but I guess version 9.04 or whatever, uh, when the wheel comes out, we'll have it in here as well. So you just add a new device, you go to cube controls, and then you have the AMG Sim wheel here. Ooh. And then this is the default profile. You have one slider for these shift lights and one brightness slider for the rest Just go. and you can do whatever you want this shouldn't be a sim up tutorial um but the limit is only your imagination electronics on the inside i mean i opened the wheel i had all these springs falling out it was great it took like 30 minutes to find all of them because they were like all, <laughs> all over the place of course uh, electronics are done very well i had a few things to criticize on the f core not the case here no squished cables electronics board looks fine so yeah Good job on that, cube <clears throat> controls. Then, to come to the end of this review, three things that I like about this wheel. First of all, the buttons. These buttons are freaking amazing. These are the best buttons on any sim racing steering wheel that I have ever used, including the okay. Auto P9 that I love so much. These are better. Another thing, grip size. Super, super comfortable in my hands. It feels really, really good ergonomically. And the third point, of course, the magnetic cable. This is so good. Three things that I don't like about the wheel. Kann man das schon kaufen? First is the size. For my personal taste, it is a little bit too big at 320 millimeters. Again, I guess the more I drive with it, the more I will get used to it. But right now, coming from smaller wheels, it just feels big. Then second point. Ich glaube, ich muss Q Controls mal eine E-Mail schreiben und mal fragen, ob ich auch vielleicht eventuell möglicherweise eine Review Unit bekommen könnte. And having both the Mercedes and the Cube Controls logo on the front, it uh, looks a bit strange, especially because the Cube Controls logo is like the Merc logo, just like rotated by 30 degrees. Not a big deal, but it kind of triggers my OCD a little bit. And then the third thing I do not like about the wheel is the lack of a dual clutch and also that you cannot add one if you want to. Makes sense for a GT3 kind of wheel because you don't need one for those cars, but if you want to buy one wheel to use for whatever, it would be nice to be able to have a dual clutch on it. Stimmt, so, ja. would I recommend it? If you do not mind having a really, really big wheel and if you do not need a dual clutch, then absolutely, I can recommend this wheel. I think you're getting an insane value at the price you pay. It's pretty much a bigger... F core that has been improved in every point. And I mean, I already like the F core quite a lot. So this is a really good wheel. If you have any questions, I'm streaming on Twitch every Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. If you want to ask me live or you can join the Discord, I'll put the link in the description below. If you like the video, maybe give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. 
And yeah, I hope to see you all in the next video. Bye bye. Danke, Dan. Das ist echt ein schönes Wheel. Das habe ich auf der Dings schon gesehen. Auf der Sim Racing Expo.